remember we are traveling the memory line and going to the school. In grade three, we did multiplication tables, spelling test. We had balconos made from baking soda and vinegar. We would love to do that in the classics. The annual science fair, the EVS lessons, that's what we did in grade three. Let's move ahead, fast forward here. And here we are in high school grade 10, selecting those subjects, whether I should take AI, web designing, animation, media, the skill subjects as such, apart from the regular subjects which we all study. And now, imagine that you are in grade 12, the senior secondary navigating first dates, college applications, and the emerging independence of adulthood. In all this, let's discuss innovation in education sector, innovation in our school. I'm so glad when I was sitting there, I saw that GNA stands for inspiring innovation. Thank you, sir, I just loved it. Innovation is there, we are living, we are working, we are changing, and we're moving ahead. We are doing justice to the education which we are giving to our children. So uh, officially, can you teach me where I'm making mistakes, son? All right, I think about it. In school, we teach us, what do we teach us do in the school? We are teaching content. Remember, you take your hard copy. You have the content and you have the pages. The lesson content which is there. We teach facts. Solar system, we teach, we teach, um, uh, all the facts which are there as such, in the sense um, uh, we teach that if, if, if it's about color, this color, this added, gets, gives us this, it's a fact. And then we teach dates. First World War happened then, Second World War happened then, and so on. Formulas, H plus O2 is equal to H2O. Two pi r, the circumference, length into breadth, the area, and so on. And then of course, research we do go for when we actually uh, find out details about a particular topic and come to some conclusions, maybe some surveys also, when we talk about research. And then theories. We talk about, um, uh, say, the, the theory, we talk about various rules and regulations, Newton's laws, we teach them, we teach about E is equal to MC squared and so on and so forth. And we talk n number of stories, stories with moral, uh, fiction stories and so on. And then lots of information we give to our children. Virtually limitless information is what we give to our children in our school. And we teachers, we do it. Is this innovation in education? Still a question mark. But students can find this information which we are giving to our children in our classes. Anything, information on anything, information anytime and anywhere. Is this innovation in education? Still a question mark. Sure, students know how to search, use a search engine and find out all possible information. Whatever content, research, uh, theories, rules, regulations, they can find all information. They know how to use Yahoo, Google, Bing. They know all the search engines and they can find all possible information which is there. Is using search engine innovation in education? We still have to move ahead and find out the answer what innovation is. Presently, we use the social media also when it comes to education. Facebook, you put a question, the entire class is answering the question. You move on to Instagram, you put a picture, a picture is, speaks a thousand words, they say. And then everybody reads the picture the, he, the way he or she wants it, and they write it down in the Instagram. And then LinkedIn, yes, 13 above, you can join LinkedIn. Lots of training sessions, free sessions are there as such. YouTube. The amount of YouTube we used during the pandemic was enormous uh, uh, use as such, a very, very big use as such. Uh, Pin and press, Twitter, Twitter, you use it beautifully when, when you make groups in your classroom and you say, you write two lines and this one write two lines and so on, and soon we find that we have created a verse. A poem is ready as such. And then of course, what's up, we call it, it's a university, where every possible information of every type is there, right, wrong, Whatever it is, but the information is there. 
is using social media in learning innovation in education. Is that innovation? Teachers are no longer the main source of information. We know that when, when everything can be obtained online. So, is our role in the lives of students obsolete? Are teachers not required? Teachers are, can never be replaced, we've been talking about. Is learning obsolete when everything is available as such? Is education sector obsolete? Is a million dollar question. Parallel system is running, ma'am, just talked about it. Coming to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, for ladies and gentlemen who are not aware of it. This is UN 2030 Agenda. 193 country leaders, they joined together, they came together on, um, in September 2015 and they signed a memorandum. India is also one of the signatories. And they said, these are the 17 goals which every country need to achieve if you want a sustainable world. Right? And these goals are very, very simple. If I talk about these goals, it is as simple as no poverty. No poverty should be there anywhere in the world. No hunger, good health. Good health is one goal which we really, really believed in and wanted to achieve when, when the pandemic was there. Uh, goal four is quality education, which I'm going to emphasize about, and then gender equality, clean water, clean energy, and maybe I move on to goal 13, climate action, life, uh, below water, life above water, uh, peace, justice, and strong institution, and then partnership of goals. We need to know what these goals are. And from these goals, which the world is working for, to attain all these goals by 2030, which is the United Nations agenda, I pick up goal four, which is quality education. Every goal has a vision statement. And the vision statement for SDG4 is ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. That's what we principals are supposed to look into. That's what is our responsibility. And that's what we have to help the United Nations to achieve the 2030 agenda, especially when it comes to quality education. Innovation in education moves on. What does it mean? What does it look like, innovation in education? Innovation in education means doing what's best for the students, all right? We want our students to love learning, and that is innovation And in whatever we do so that the students may learn to love learning is innovation. By being innovative, we can engage students in ways we never have before, and that's pretty incredible. Innovation in education sector, it's a single word, word that encapsulates everything that is exciting in education. In education sector, a goal to shoot. All of us need to innovate ourselves and go for innovation in education. It means you're different, your ideas are new, and your work is almost magical. Our work needs to be magical when we, when we are dealing with little children who are the future generation who, in whose custody we want to give this world. I think presently nothing moves without talking about the impact of uh, COVID. So the impact of COVID, you know, this is a group of teachers when I put it in, in, the, uh, in the social media, in my group of uh, educators from all around the world, I said, what do you think is the impact of uh, COVID? And these are the are the reasons they have given. This is the, not the reason actually, what are the impacts they have given. First and foremost is loss of parents. Some students lost parents. Loss of income of parents was there. Loss of stamina of the children was there. Loss of to tolerance was there. They were, they were intolerant. And then loss of respect. Learning gaps have been there. And then loss of relationship has been there and loss of values has also been one of the impacts of COVID. 
plenty of impacts of COVID has been there. Impact of COVID-19 continues. Low self-esteem of the students have been observed. Loss of self-confidence of the student. Two years have been very, very bad and sad for the children, for the teachers, for the parents, for everybody for that reason. Lack of socialization. Children could not socialize. Lack of um, uh, health care resistance. Lack of social emotional skill. Lack of reading habit. Over dependence upon parents resulting in lack of uh, interdependence. And then inability to concentrate. All these have been the various impacts of COVID. Some more, I believe, are there. Uh, moving ahead, let's see. Lack of adaptability. Over dependence on electronic devices. You can never imagine now, the child can never imagine sitting without a mobile phone as such. Need of digital detox, as they call it, addiction of online games, depression, isolation, addiction to screen, shorter concentration step, uh, span, and uh, irritability, all this have been the impact of COVID. Moving on, impact of COVID led to anxiety amongst the students. They don't wish to communicate now. They would rather communicate online. Body image issues there, they have been observing themselves on camera. Now they, they've lost the confidence in their own body. Low academic results have been there, eyesight problem, and then uh, you know economic problem, anxieties. Skip classes, they, they do in, in a big way. Again, these, these points have come from the teachers itself. Lack of comprehension of listening, speaking, reading, writing, vocabulary skills in English language for that matter, all languages as such. Depression has been found in plenty amongst the students. Lack of motivation is there when it comes to the children. And then lack of punctuality, isolation, addiction to online games. Everything happened in these two years. Innovation in education, post-COVID, it's COVID-19 back to school, when the children came back to school, what innovations do we need to do now? We have to assess the learning, how much they have actually learned in these two years. All right? And then rebuild foundational competencies. Our children are not able to write, they're not able to read. There are, uh, when it comes to numeracy, there are, there's a loss everywhere, there's a loss. And we need to flip the script. The normal routine methods are not working now, and we need to flip the script. We need to change. Innovation in educated, education sector now, it involves a different way of looking at problems and solving them. This we never went through earlier, so we, we need to find new ways to sort it out. What did we do? We went, we went in for research. We decided to go for a research project. We went in for plenty of surveys. This is a survey for the teachers. What did they go through? Uh, a, a survey which was hardly for five minutes maximum, which they had to spend. And then uh, how did their family find when they were teaching online? How did they find? Are the children not? Have the children understood? So we went for a survey for the teachers. And this was uh, you know, followed by a survey for the students also. So the entire school went through a survey for the students. And then the parents survey also. What have they to say regarding the COVID impacts? And then after that, we found that in primary classes, there was a reading loss. Children cannot read because during the online learnings, they could actually, we could not give chance to every child to read as such. Writing, a child who was in LKG joined the online classes and then UKG and comes to first. The parent actually owned up, some of them, they said ki, bachcho ko bohat vakt lagta tha to hum hi homework kar dete the, fir upload kar dete the. It was a reality, right? The children could not hold the pencil properly and write down. There was numeracy loss. Mathematics in this final examination, the entire school has not performed well because mathematics needs practice, and somehow we did not practice to the extent it was required. And then art, and then social behavior, emotional state, all this have been found when it came to post uh, uh, COVID and the survey which, which we had gone for.
6 to 8 and 9 to 12, the survey told us that there were learning losses, no doubt. Comprehension and writing skills had gone haywire. Mathematics was a subject which everybody dreaded to study now. Science also, the performance was not good. Digital dependency is there. Everything they would like to do is they would like to surf and write down the answer. Body language has changed. The culture which we had taught the children for all these years when they come back after one and a half years, and in some cases out of 24 months, just four months in the school, you know, we taught them heels first and then the toes. You Walk like that, walk smartly. But there they were let, uh, shoulders and hands let loose, and that's how they were walking in the this thing. And then the, you know, uh, the way they were interacting, hoy and all those things which we never thought would happen in a chal hut and all that stuff had come in. Uh, we, we were trying to prepare gentlemen uh, students when they move out. But yes, in the ground, fine, everybody is at their best and they need to enjoy that. But then this behavior loss was also there. And then the school culture was lost, totally lost. What to do now? So post-COVID-19, innovation in education has flipped the script. That's what I've been talking about. We need to change our ways. Our perception of uh, giving education needs to change. It cannot be just, you know, come, teach, go back. Now in this position when the learning losses are there, when the behavioral losses are there, we need to be that passionate educator, the passionate leader who can actually change the world of the child. We are grown-ups, we could manage and fight the pandemic. But just imagine a child who's just meant to, you know, run around and fly around. That particular child, you know, he was put in the four walls of the house. He was a COVID prisoner as such. For that child, we need to do something more, something different. The old ways and means cannot work. So let's flip the script. He started this road to recovery. It's an international research project. I invite all of you to join. Fine. Otherwise, let there be a road to recovery in every school. Whatever losses are there, behavior, academic, whatever losses are there, we need to bridge those gaps. We need to mend the gaps. So we are working on this, and there are so many goals we'll be covering during this particular time. For example, when I talk about uh, goal number three, that's good health. Our physical education teachers will be focusing on how can we bring that spring in the child's uh, behavior? How can we make them physically fit? Uh, they have been at home sitting, not going in for games. Special efforts are being put in, and we're working on it. How can we make sure that the communication skills are improved? Can we use some games as such? So we are working on every aspect of the losses which we have seen and uh, uh, involving the wider community when we'll be inviting parents and putting up class shows that see, look now, this is when the child came and this is when the child is there after two months. And, and this goes on for one full year till we actually recover the entire thing. Way forward for road to recovery, how are we going to go about it? One of the activities which we have started immediately is a podcast. Communication skills is what we're going to believe uh, working on our uh, podcast here. Socializing with my friends in schools daily is the road to recovery from COVID effect. We have to put all this in the heads and hearts. If we are there to recover now, we are there to change. We have to be full of energy and strength as we were earlier, two years back. Building the confidence, building the self-esteem, throwing away the anxiety, some of the topics which we had. Technology can help in road to recovery to bridge the learning and behavior gap. And then four days, face-to-face -face and two days online classes would be road to recovery post-COVID. And then um, we had some more um, topics, face-to-face -face classes, and my teacher's love is the road to recovery from COVID-19 fair. And then the time I spend in school playground, my art class and my dance class is the road to recovery to COVID challenge. So the, the reality is, the problem is there. Children are not the same. We need to change. We need to go for this road to recovery. And that's uh, what we have done. How are we going forward? So we have a core group, the think tank, we call it. And then expert counselors for students, teachers, and parents. We've been doing all this, actually, in our school. But now it's a focused plan where we go for every class when it comes to counseling. We have psychologists, we have parenting uh, 